Hello everyone, hope everybody's having a good October. Congrats to all the Golf Digest best teachers out there. And Chuck asked a really good question on postmodern golf. And the question was, he looked up the word drag, dragging in a dictionary, and it said, you know, pulling something along. And when he looks at the force quivers that we put out, it shows that down at the bottom, you're still pulling on the club and the magnitude gets high. So um, what would be a handle drag then in our vernacular? Well, a couple things. Number one is when we're looking at how the golfer pulls this club around or pushes this club around, the linear part of the swing, we do two things. We have a little coordinate system that's on the club to look at the club movement and that's something relative to the ground. And then we put another coordinate system on the hub if we want to look at, you know, a little more of what the golfer might be experiencing um, in comparison with the hub. They end up being the same thing. It's just one, it's just two different reference frames. But anyway, what that said is the predominant action is along the club. And I'm going to switch over to my a screen, uh, Screen recording will switch into my Jacobs 3D software to show you this. So pulling along the club is the predominant action. And the components of that speed it up and they also curve it. So that's the predominant action that takes place. Now, when you're coming down the bottom and this club is curving around and you're putting your force and as this thing starts to you know change directions down the bottom you know the force starts to really increase clubs moving at a much higher rate and it requires a lot of force to change the direction of it now pieces of the force you know along the hub or at the club could be pulling back on it pushing a little forward on it or you could get it to the point where you have neither and you're just pulling straight on the club this way. Um, you're probably going to have components of it in slightly this way or that way if you like throw the club head at it or something like that. So it's the components of the force that make the club rotate. If I just pull like this, there's not much, uh, you know, twisting action on the club. Yet if I go like this, or if I go like this, the club will rotate. So it's those components of the force that can put you into a, you know, so-called dragging handle, or can put you into more of a club head throw type position. So it's those pieces that are most interesting. Uh, another great question was, why would you say straight line with the hub at the bottom? It looks like in every single one of those uh, things in my book and the things that I throw out there are always curving. Yep. So when we use the hub illustration, they are curving. But what we focus on is when the curving action is taking place, is the golfer curving it more? Is the radius, we call it? of the local circle of the hub at that particular point in time, even though it's not circular, we create little local circles. And is the, is the curving action at the hub getting smaller or is it getting bigger? And when it's getting bigger, then we say it's more straight line. So what I'm gonna do now is show you a couple of parameters, some of these you haven't seen yet, and including the radius one, so you can see how uh, it's get, the circle would be getting smaller or bigger. So hopefully that little explanation helps. And now let's look at some graphics. This is the one that everybody's used to seeing. There's the linear force applied to the grip point of this player. This is a really good player hitting a seven iron. You can see that uh, there's the direction. So here's the club head in green. The shafts are pink. The red is the hub path and the black arrow is the force quiver. And you can see that the linear force applied to the grip point starts to grow and magnitude and change directions. Okay, so there would be at the last club head, that would be the last force quiver. And then they all match up to uh, each instant in time. So there's the overall. Now, 
if we took a section of the swing, let's just take this section. So what I did was I broke just down this bottom portion of the swing and isolated those force quivers. So you can see at this particular point, here's the club head, there's the club, there's the force applied to the grip point right there. So you can see the golfers uh, applying their force this way at that point in the swing. And then you can see that it starts to come around and right before impact, there's the force quiver that would match up with that last club head right there. The second quiver here would match up with, with this shaft. So you can see the force on this club is like that. So it's definitely forward of the golfer. So this golfer is probably standing somewhere in here and his hands are forward at impact and you can see the way that he's forcing it down by impact. Okay, so there's the linear force applied to the grip point at this point. So now we start to need, we need to break this down into components to see, you know, what kind of response it's going to put into the club. So if we just looked at the force along the club, so here comes the force along the club, you'll notice that these red quivers go around, they match up with the club, and this is showing us the magnitude of the force that's directly along the club. So this would be like your golf machine, pull along the shaft, pull, you know, pull an arrow out of a quiver type thing, and there it is as it comes all the way around. And when you start to look at where this one is, and this one is, the last two, you could see that the last two that we looked at, I'll move this one over so you could see it. You could see the last two pieces of uh, here of the swing, in this particular one, there's the quivers. You could see they have a little more of a tilted angle to them than just along the club. So it's those components that are the interesting ones that create a lot of the effects that you're seeing. So you can see the predominant action is definitely uh, along the club, but you know, it's a complicated thing and the golfer's applying, you know, a lot of force, especially down at the bottom. So now let's look at the components of this because this is what gets interesting. So now I'm going to pull in the tangential to the hub path force and I'm going to pull in the normal to the hub path force. So here's the, this is still that same, I'm going to take this, let me take this one out for you. Bear with me a second. So this is still that same analysis of so the same swing, this one here. Now we're breaking it into components at the hub and now we can take a look at, I'll spin this around for you, the component that's involved in speeding it up spin that around on its head so you can see the direction that the golfer is speeding it up as he's coming around and then the direction of how he's curving it, and this is your going normal. So you can see that the way that he's trying to curve it when he comes around, it's a little noisy as he tries to um, curve it around. And this is where your, your good players have their trouble. They have their trouble and when that club goes to move out and they're trying to manage how that club comes around. And this is why you know, terms like handle dragging come about. So now there's your component that's trying to curve it. So this, turn that there, turn this one back around. Now here's the component of the same linear force applied to the grip point. Here's another component <laughs> and that's the binormal one. So this is the components that would want to move force out of the plane. So you can see that this golfer down at the bottom, one of the ways that they line the club up into impact, more than just do the classic go normal, like you've heard people say, is they they push the handle out. Uh, I've seen some gr I've seen some good players. I wouldn't call them great players, but one handicaps where they 
had hardly any of this component down at the bottom, and they did it all almost by normal. The club was standing straight up, almost at impact. It was unbelievable. You know, super high vertical swing plane angle. But it, it's interesting when you start to look at all these differences. So there's the components of the force. And when you do this part too long and too far forward, we call that handle dragging. So the the it would keep the we'll get rid of the binormal one. It would keep the normal component on this side too long and the wraparound of the normal to the hub fit path forces would be really disturbed and late, like this one is. Uh, you can see how far forward the handle is on this golfer and his ability to change the direction of the club down the bottom is a bit noisy. And you can, that's gonna have a lot of angular responses to the club and create a whole lot of necessary applied torque. So the reason that the normal to the hub path forces are on this side is because the club is on this side of the hub. And then when the club goes over to the other side, that's when it wraps around to this side. So this is the real complex part of the swing. So he's not really switching the, the shaft of the club out to the other side until this far deep into uh, the downswing and location of the hub path. So it's this exchange from when the club swings out that's the hardest part. And that's why you can't just, you know, expect some type of free release or get this thing to snap around because it gets harder and harder to do this and harder and harder to change the curve of the swing down the bottom. So that's a very small smattering of the force and you know the things that compli are complicated and what we deal with you know when we're we're teaching um, there's also components at the club and there's a, you know we have a thousand samples now and I'm gonna publish lots of books and you know uh, swing reports and stuff that people can study but there's your I mean that's the first time I really went in deep but this is what we do on a, on a daily basis with golf lessons okay now back to the curving action So we were talking about how much, we always talk about how much it's curving. So I'm gonna, I'll get rid of these. And we use a hub illustrator. Dr. Nesbitt came up with this as a quick way for me to be able to um, look at one parameter and then decide um, what's happening exactly at the hub. So there's your club head. There's your shafts, there's your hub path, and you can see it's color coded. So green means, what green means is, green means that the curve is getting wider. So now I'm gonna bring in the actual graph where we graph these things out. Okay, so here comes the actual graph. And right now we're interested in the red. So the red is going to tell us what we need to see here. So you could see until this part of the downswing, which would be right to about here, first little very small increment of time from here to there, the red got bigger. So the radius got bigger. So the local circle got bigger and wider till about that point. Then it starts to get smaller. So now you can see it starts to get smaller. So now this would turn red. And then you can see right before impact or at the point of impact, it looked like it went green. So it looked like it might have, you look here, it's a very small amount, but you can see how that changed. So this is, looking at this, this tells us how the golfer is curving their hub path. So when this is taking place and it's getting bigger and wider, we know that you're trying to, well, we assume or we can start to infer based on other characteristics, uh, that the golfer is trying to delay the outward movement of the club and then curving it will definitely want to help the club to move out. So if, and a lot of times we see this, as the golfer is coming into contact, if this radius starts to get bigger like that, then we would call that more of a straighter line type of move into impact. So 
really taken an in-depth look at, so here's a hub path center of curvature. This is the same golfer early in the downswing. And this matches up with uh, that first phase of the downswing. And you're going to notice that not only is this, the reason I'm showing this is, not only is this curve getting uh, wider or narrow, it's also moving in and out of the plane. So if you try to do a hands out type lay down, you're going to get more of a three dimensional center of curvature motion, uh, movement, path, so to speak. And that leads to a whole host of other things down at the bottom. So if I had one recommendation when you're curving your hands is I would try to eliminate the three, as much of this three dimensionality as you can of the center curve. But that's a conversation for another time. And that comes from, you know, years and years of, of looking at these things. But anyway, so that hopefully will clear some things up. Michael Jacobs from Long Island, New York. Hope everybody's doing well.